Hi guys, it's Elaine from Drink With Us. Today I'm interviewing Cam Dawson from Jack Daniels. We're going to be discussing competitive bartending. Please excuse the few moments where Cam goes a little bit pixely. He is on lockdown in 1999. And don't forget to follow us, like us and subscribe on YouTube, Facebook and Instagram. And if you do want to purchase any of the products that you see on any of our content, just head over to www.drinkwithus.co.uk forward slash mom that is www.drinkwithus.co.uk forward slash m-o-m it won't cost you guys anymore but it will help us a little bit with our running costs thanks and i hope you enjoy bye Hi guys, it's Elaine from Drink With Us. Uh, today I'm here with Cam Dawson, who's the brand ambassador for Jack Daniels, and we're going to be having a little chat about uh, competitions in the bar world. Uh, hi Cam. Hi Elaine. How are you? You all right? I'm all good, I'm all good. A little bit tired, bit of a crazy time, too much bed, too much work, all of the above. Nice. Uh, what are you drinking today? Today uh, it is, well, the current time is half past two. Mm-hmm. So I'm drinking good old English breakfast tea. I'm going to drink some, I've got some coffee and I'm going to add a little bit of Jack Daniels, the uh, single bar. I, I have a present. I have a you. feeling that this would be the case. So <laughs> I thought I would join you. Uh, it's, it's five o'clock somewhere, right? Yeah. I'll just put a little bit in. Oh, I've done the whole 50 mil. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Look responsibly, Elaine. I am. This is my only drink today, I'm sure. All right, cheers. Cheers. Clink. Oh, there. <laughs> All right, uh, let's get started with a little bit about you, Mr. Dawson. Um, how long have you been working with Jack Daniels and particularly their competition side of things as well as uh, your brand ambassador role? Yeah, well, um, the competition side of things is, is, is really a part of the, the role of a brand ambassador. Uh, as you know, before I was a brand ambassador, I was a bartender, your your neighbour. Uh, to anyone that's watching this, uh, I used to live with this lady here, whichever side she's on. <laughs> uh, but uh, I was going a bit stir crazy behind the bar five, six days a week. So one day a week, I... I was very lucky. I was in the right place at the right time. I got invited to come and speak about something that I was really passionate about, which was uh, Tennessee whiskey, Jack Daniels. Um, and then uh, that was about 10 years ago now. Wow. So I, I did part-time for about four and a half years. Uh, then I went full-time um, about five and a half years ago now. And yeah, the rest is history. Mm. Um, in terms of competitions, that's actually how I got noticed by the brand at the very start of it, um, where I did the 2009 Jack Daniels birthday cocktail competition, and I got through to the final, which was which was held in Lynchburg, Tennessee, which was incredible. Um, and uh, I, I suppose that put me on on the brand's radar. Uh, and it was it was years after that that I started working with them, but they, they knew who I was because of that. Um, but the competition side of thing was wasn't really there when I first joined full time. It was a couple of years before we 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 realised that we were we were missing something here. We've we've had a couple of years off from organising a national comp. Let's do it again, and that came about in the form of Tennessee calling. So mm-hmm. that uh, we finished in December with the trip for the winners, and that was in its fourth year. Um, And then this year will be Tennessee Calling 5, which is pretty exciting. The trouble is, in in this current climate, we don't know how that's going to look um, at the moment. I think we really need to change it, uh, because at the moment, no one is in a bar, including me. Yeah, it's, it's tricky. So there's a lot of changes, we're, we're, but we're still in the planning stage, but we are planning on, on doing a new comp. So, yeah. You mentioned that you were a bartender before moving into um, being brand ambassador. So when you were bartending, did you also compete in, sorry, you did say that Jack Daniels noticed you first in the competition, but did you compete mm-hmm. a lot or was that like a one-off? 
what was your deal with competition? It, it was a medium amount, I suppose. Um, I did reasonably well, I think, uh, in, on the cocktail competition circuit. Um, I think they're fantastic, um, and, and, and I've got a lot of to say about them, which is, I suppose, why I'm here speaking to you today. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I started. So I started my bartending career pouring pints in London. And uh, I, where did I go? I went out to Australia for a couple of years, and that's really where I caught the cocktail bug. I was surrounded by some very supportive colleagues that that, that really wanted me. They, they could see that there was true passion there. I think that's always very important. Uh, they really fed that. And by the time that it was, um, by the time that I was back in the UK, I, it really sort of set in. Uh, I got a couple of jobs in and around Brighton. So Coba, which was a private member's bar back in the day. Uh, I don't think it's with us anymore, which is a shame. Nope. Uh, it went on to Merkaba, uh, Oki, above Oki. Um, and then I went to um, Plateau, where yeah, it was great. I kind of got brought in there to, to develop the cocktail list. Um, and to speak about the whiskies and stuff, of which they had an amazing selection. I haven't been in for a wee while, embarrassingly, so I'm sure it's still still cracking. Um, but uh, I started doing a lot of competitions in my Coba and Merkaba days. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they were, they were brilliant. You, you learn so many things. You you meet new people. Yeah, they're, they're, they're very useful. And you get to win prizes that don't normally get handed to you so yeah yeah I think as a bartender you know you're famously not paid a huge amount of money and when you get a brand that sort of says we're going to bring you out to the US or Mexico or wherever it's such a bonus it's you know we've got to find it somewhere let's say that that uh, you and I robbed a bank and decided to go on holiday to Mexico I think the standard tourist would probably go to uh, the coast, go to a nice beach resort, maybe for a city, long city break, they'd go to Mexico City, a lot of culture in there as well, but you're traveling so far. But to have it all organized by a brand that are used to going out there, they know the good places to go, they they know the places not to go, and to take you to a distillery in the middle of nowhere is just fantastic. And I'm very lucky that as a brand ambassador, I get to do that with people now where I get to take them to Lynchburg, Tennessee. Tennessee is just an amazing, amazing place. But I think the bug really hasn't caught on with a lot of people. So if you go to America, you're going to New York. Uh, If you go as far as the West Coast, you'll probably go to LA, San Francisco, Miami or Orlando. If you've grown up going to America and going to the theme parks and stuff. But how many times do you get the opportunity to go right in the middle of well, the mid south and go down to Lynchburg and Nashville, Music City? Um, it's, yeah, it, I am very, very lucky that I get to go on these trips. But I love the, the, the biggest um, the biggest thing is, is seeing the faces of these people when you're walking down Broadway. You're taking them to places where Chris Christopherson and uh, and Willie Nelson and Johnny Cash, Elvis used to used to play, and then you get to take them down to the home of Jack Daniels, which is just like <laughs> because it's just really a magical place. And um, not a lot has changed there in 150 years, and it's no, it's a, it's incredible, amazing. Um, yeah, and I think you know I've I've done some comps as well, um, and I think one of the things that I found really interesting was meeting a lot of other bartenders from other cities doing different sort of ideas and creating things differently and sort of keeping in touch with them and watching what they're doing on their Instagrams and their Facebooks and sort of learning from their ideas, not stealing their ideas, but being inspired by them and going, Oh my God, I never thought of doing that. You know, it's such a, you say being inspired by, uh, let's just be honest. You've got to cold heartedly steal their techniques and their processes and things. That's how you progress. Um, that's certainly how, how I progress back in the day. That's such a good thing about comps, why I always recommend bartenders to do comps. I think nowadays a lot of people are very shy. They don't want to have a bad experience. They don't want to feel like, oh, I never won, so 
I'll, I'll never win. What's the point of entering it? Well, if you're not in it, you're not going to win it. Yeah. So you always have to be, um, you, you always have to give it a bash. Um, and if you're confident about your ability, you, your recipes, you've got a lovely story behind it, I think your, your chances are just as good as anyone else. Yeah, I remember doing a comp. I, it was when I was sort of doing a winning streak and I was quite confident about competitions and I had to go to, I think it was Southampton, to do a comp for um, another Earth. company. And uh, I got there and I got up to do it and I completely froze. I couldn't speak. I didn't. I couldn't remember anything. I just kind of went through the motions. I did so badly. But the one thing I learned from that was, it's fine. You know, the world, I, the world has not ended. No, it Your was actually fine. Is still intact. Yeah, um, had it, drinks with great, the guys, had a great time. You know, it was fine. <laughs> I think the, uh, I think the competition bartender when they get truly in it, um, it's a great way to to really get the the name of the bar out there. Uh, speaking more selfishly to get your own name out there mm -hmm. uh, but it's so good for the bar I always recommend bar owners to get their bartenders into cocktail competitions and things because there's a lot of good exposure a lot of the big brands like Jack Daniels we tier, team up with um, some great media partners um, so your name will be in light <laughs> uh, yeah um, it's such a good way to learn new techniques this is how I progressed an awful lot I still remember very clearly the first ever competition that I did, which was, it was Brighton, Brighton's Rising Star. It was a Grey Goose competition. Um, and it was held in, do you remember In Vino Veritas? Yes. It had the little underneath. <laughs> That's now uh, Bison I Beer, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's where my first one was, and, and I won that. Um, which was, I, I was the thing was I was so nervous, and for weeks before that, I was testing different ratios of my uh, of, of my core product and my modifiers and my syrups and my bitters and just lots of different uh, ratios, different methods of serving it. And I think when if you trust your own palate um, and you're happy with it, then 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 you should be proud of it. But even from that, the thing I really remember was, and this is silly, but it was my first comp. I had no idea what I was doing. I think part of the rule was you had to be under a certain age and you had to be fresh to bartending as in like only done it for maybe a year or something or, or, or a couple of years. But I remember watching a guy put ice into his serving glasses in front, in front of the three judges. And rather than doing as we all do on a busy on a busy Friday or Saturday shift where you're just chucking it in there. Mm -hmm. He got a napkin and they put it on the rim of the glass and he, just so he wasn't touching the ice cubes. I was like, right, okay, I better do that because I don't want to be seen as as as, uh, as my process is being different and things. So that's something that I took on and always did in comps. It maybe wouldn't work if you're doing it in your general service day to day, um, but uh, it's, you've got to know your judges as well. You, some are more particular about that than others. Do you think it's important to know, um, sort of, if you can at all, know what your judges' flavour profiles are, like what, what their favourite drinks are and stuff? If you can, yeah, absolutely. Um, every judge has a different flavour profile. That can work in, to your advantage or against it, I suppose. Um, if, you're, if your palate is on the sweeter side and you want to produce a sweeter drink, definitely explain that, though. Uh, and not as an afterthought. So you want to say, I've made this drink a little bit sweeter. This is the reason why. Um, if you get a judge that's got a sweeter palate, he's going to absolutely love that. To be a good judge, though, which is a, a, another category, but he'll need to recognize if that's if that's still balanced, if you can spot. But yeah, so, me as a judge, my drinks that I tend to love are the herbal um uh, stirred down and brown twists on Manhattans like uh, Green Points and Brooklyn's and uh, Sazeracs and old fashions, that style, which is, come on, I'm a whiskey ambassador. If we're not drinking Manhattans and uh, and, and things that are herbal and spicy. <laughs> I, I, I also remember when I was at Merkaba at my hotel, 
I did a competition and then was it no it was a bright and wide competition it was just being held at, at Merkabuttel uh, and it was for another whiskey company and I came up with I just I couldn't get it so it was perfect and uh, here's the thing about cocktail comps I'm sure a lot of the listeners or, or viewers in this case have, have, that have done comps have had this your drink was your drink was perfect but it just wasn't right. What the judge is probably trying to tell you was their chat was a lot better. Uh, your yeah. your drink amazing, but then remember that uh, the actual drink in a, in a cocktail competition isn't the be all and end all. It, you've got to show the judges that you've done your research, that you understand the brand and its uh, and its ethos and, and, and things like that. Judges, especially if they're from the brand, they do like to be compl- complimented. Uh, in that way where, for example, if I was judging a Jack competition here today and you didn't mention that it's from Lynchburg, Tennessee, I, what have you been reading? Um, so, yeah, you you got to do your research. Um, and if, I mean, their reasoning behind that is if they're going to take you to the other side of the world, you, you, yeah, you've got you've to prove your worth, you know? And... With that, so if you if you are going to mention facts about the brand, if you're on say fifth, and people have already said, "Oh, it's from Lynchburg," what do you do? I would probably make a joke of it and saying the the class of the the competitors here is amazing. So you you already know that this point, this point, this point, this point, tick it off. They've got a judging sheet in most cases. I hate using judging sheets, <laughs> but. Uh, They've got a a, a, a a a judging sheet in front of them with lots of boxes, lots of comment cards. So just be safe. If it is if it's going to get down to one point and it's because you missed out saying those facts and a judge is being a bit nitty gritty about it, just list them off. I would personally say it in a jokey way. The competitors have been fantastic. So you guys already know all your brand history and your production. For example, it comes from here. It comes from where, and it comes from there, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, because if it gets down to that one single point and you'll lose it because of that, then you'll be heartbroken. And I know personally how how devastated you can be if you put everything that you have into a drink and then you miss by one point, you question everything. Mm. Uh, how do I do this the next time? How do I do this? Uh, this is the competition circuit. This is what gets bartenders better, in, in, in my opinion, amongst a whole world of other things as well. But um, but yeah, that's that, that's I would definitely say it. Yeah, I remember. Um, I think it was maybe my second or third competition. I came second, and Miles from Mixology Group, Miles Cunliffe, was um, he was judging, and he came up to me at the end, and he was like you would have won that, but you didn't say the facts. And I said, oh, but everyone, but they'd already said them. And he was like, doesn't matter. It's your time. Say it. And that's stuck with yeah. me ever since, you know? And yeah, you're right. Like acknowledge that it's been said before, because that shows that you've been paying attention to your other competitors and you've got some sports. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you've definitely got to have a lot of, um, um, you've, you've definitely got to have some respect for your fellow competitors. Anyone that came into a competition, uh, flung their jacket up, waltzed onto the bar and and just acted like an arrogant fuck. Uh, probably in my competition. But um, I'm, I'm happy to say that that's never happened with me. So. Um, so we've already talked a little bit about what you're looking for when you're judging. Um, but when you're planning a competition, what are the things that you take into consideration to get that off the ground? Well, from from a company point of view that there's a lot of work that goes on in the background it's not I think gone are the days that you, you can just show up post an advert on on Facebook uh, and, and hope that you'll get 15 to 20 bartenders showing up to compete to win a bottle of, of or, or a, a bottle of the range you know um, I think we're very lucky today that if you're a bartender there are so many brands out there that want to get your attention, that want to take you to, to America. They want to take you to Finland. They want to take you to Mexico, France, wherever. 
Um, so I think that to attract the people, you need to have a really good experience in terms of the competition side of things, and then also the prize. Why does the why does the competitor want to enter this comp? Uh, I remember one of my competitions where back when I was at, um, at my hotel again was to win a Swiss watch, which didn't I try it that many. People. I've had a thing that I've always wanted a Swiss watch. So I was like, right, I'm going to enter that and I'm going to win it. I never won it. Um, <laughs> but I gave it a good old shot. Uh, it was a really good comp though. Um, but yeah, even before all this is set, you've got to think about logistics, uh, travel for people, uh, a whole itinerary. You can't just take them to a place or, or if, if the prize is the main, is, is the, the number one spot, mm-hmm. you can't just take them there and then forget about them. You've got to do a whole planning of an itinerary. It would be a little bit easier just to give them some merch, to give them a, a, a T-shirt and a bottle of the range. But that's not really inspirational, is it? Um uh, if you're asking bartenders to really give up a serious amount of their time to develop a cocktail, to to memorize the brand heritage and to, to spill it back to you, then you've got to you've got to have a big, outstanding, eye-catching prize. I think at the end of the day, um, it's because uh, brand ambassador to brand ambassador. I don't know how you find this, but it, it's nowadays it's so difficult to get people in, excited and into one room, even with our big advocacy play at Jack, which is the um, the Tennessee calling competition, getting people to those road shows that I did around the country is always difficult. You've always mm-hmm. got to really to pester people, and I hate pestering people to, to come along to the sessions and things like that. I'm quite lucky because I'm Brighton based, and we all sort of the other reps and brand ambassadors sort of stay in touch and let each other know when there's a comp coming up so we don't clash with the mm-hmm. dates because there's yeah. so much out there that people are like, oh, I want to enter that, I want to enter that, but they're two days after each other. Which one do I pick, you know? so it, 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 It's an amazing time to be a bartender. Well, maybe not currently now. <laughs> Choose your yeah. Um, But... Uh, yeah, there are so many brands out there offering some amazing, amazing things. Um, you don't have to enter all of them, bartenders at home. You can you can pick and choose to uh, whatever experience, whatever things that you will will further your career. Um, that's the good thing about Cops also that it really does put your name uh, in lights and, and and elevates your reputation not only of you but of your bar. Yeah. There are some comps that, that go global um, and make you fight it out with, with the best of every country. Um, I've never done something like that. I can't imagine the stress that these guys must be going through. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. So we've touched on some of the things that you like to see when you're judging a competition from your bartenders. Um, can you give me like a little rundown on the do's and don'ts for bartenders when they're when they're in that competition we've talked a lot about them prepping themselves for it but what do you want to see when they're standing there presenting to you a drink with your brand or if they're you know doing a comp for another brand but your do's and don'ts generally mm-hmm. clean fingernails <laughs> um a drink right in front of me make sure that you're uh, you're the best possible hygienic person that you could be um I don't know. I mean, that is a big one, of course. But brands love to be complimented. They love to to see that you've you've paid attention. You you've taken the brand story and you've developed a drink from it. I love stories in cocktail competitions. This is something that I did very well with back when I was doing comps. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Joe Bloggs might have a a, a, a bang and twist on a whiskey sour, but he's got no chat to back it up. Think of some connections. Look into the brand's story, and this this ties in with that complimenting them and, and, and sort of tipping the hat to, to the brand. If you can come up with some romantic story behind why you've used this ingredient and why you've used that ingredient, make us fall in love with that drink. Make us fall in, in, in love with you as a presenter as well. Um, it's not all about the drink. A lot of it is about uh, presenting skills and things like that. Uh, so yeah, clean fingernails, 
storytelling is always great. Mm -hmm. uh, I suppose bring, bring your own equipment. Going back to that, if you have brought only one glass and you have to make two of the drinks, you, you want that level of consistency there. And this is something that within Jack Daniels is definitely what we are looking for. Mm -hmm. For the first three years of doing Tennessee Calling, we did visits around the country and we, we took in a, a squad of people, um, a squad of judges. We had about nine or ten. Wow. And we'd all just travel to and we'd, we'd, eat, we'd order a lot of your competition entry and we'd see how consistent it is. This is a big thing. And, and this can be used in bartending when you're open on shift as well. If I come in at the start of the, the day and have a, uh, a mint julep, let's say, I want that same mint julep at the very, very end of your shift as well. Consistency is key. True. Um, how important do you think it is for a bartender to stick to the rules that are listed out as in the comp? Like, you know, you go to you go to comp sometimes and it says minimum five ingredients, but somebody's put six in and they win. Um, I don't know if it happens as often now. It did used rules to are meant to be broken, Elaine, aren't they? You think? Yeah. Ah, uh, well, I, do you know what? This is how I see it because we also have have had to put terms and conditions. Um, and, and a lot of the time, you'll have a global brand with a, a very serious law department or legal department, rather, saying you need to include this message, this message, this message in your terms and conditions. Um, reach out to, the, to whoever is hosting the comp. Have a word with them. Check before you go in. Mm -hmm. I'm very laid back in terms of my judging approach. I, I hate using, um, using judging sheets, really. Um, yeah, just if someone had come and done six ingredients where it should have been five, I'd probably let it slide. Not just for that one particular, but for the the entire the entire field. Now that can sometimes be seen as a little bit unfair because someone has really developed a drink to to really uh, to really abide by that rule. But if it came down between. Uh, if it came down between this person and this person, I would personally take that into account. What is the biggest no-no for a bartender to do during a comp, do you think? The biggest no-no for a bartender to do during a comp, it has to be not mentioning the brand itself of the, the, that you're there. Um, and this keeps going back down. Let's be serious. It's the brands that are putting these competitions on to, to, to give you, a, a, hopefully, a, a really good experience. Um, and if you want to win that, then, yeah, you, you have to mention the brand. Um, and then just put a, a little bit of history, a little bit of production, whatever you want. Just have a couple of lines to say about that particular brand of, of, of whatever you do. Um, I've unfortunately seen some comps before, not, not my own, mm -hmm. um, but when I've attended some things, I've, I've seen some people not putting even the base spirit, they've maybe forgotten to put the, the brand in the actual cocktail. I'd let them slide with that. I'd, I'd say, you know what, make it again. Um, because at the end of the day, we want a drink that is going to help you really is proud of something and we want to, to, to give this to a publication to to show to, to bartenders around the world you've got to be proud of it so yeah I, I'd let that slide I'll make it again let's have your best attempt at it are you off the school of thought that say you know usually bartenders are bloody nervous when they're up there right so if they forget to put in the no, spirit yeah, and they forget to put the spirit in so you sort of go well I want to taste your drink. You've put the effort in. Oh, yeah, to absolutely. It. You've just come from the other side of the region to come here today to make me a drink. You've forgotten to put it in there. I like to think that I'm, that I'm an all right guy. I'm going to make you do it again. But there are some judges out there that would pretty much score, score them out. Yeah. But there are, you know what, there's exceptions. There are some competitions that are really strict on this. Mine 
that I'm involved with tend not to be. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I'm a wee bit more laid back. Yeah. I guess it depends on the comp as well. If it's a comp that's sort of uh, basing its main idea is, you know, the ultimate bartender, then you expect them to remember to put their exactly, spirit in. Yeah. But if it's about the drink, and you, you would, can give you it would, the time. You would hope that whoever that was has practiced their presentation a number of times. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, there's always exceptions, isn't there? There's, there's, you can't compare this comp with this comp and things. No. It's like a, and we can't really compare everything as a, as a whole. Cam, if I was six months into bartending and I was going to go and do my very first comp, right, and I've kind of I've had to think about what goes with the spirit I'm using, and the comp is three weeks away, what advice would you give me on how do I win that comp? <laughs> First of all, good on you, because I still remember how intimidating entering your first cocktail competition is. Um, nobody wants to look like a fool. Um, nobody wants to, to to be miserable after not winning, especially when you put your heart and soul into a drink. Um, so my advice would be just practice, practice, practice. Um, just be completely fluent with your with your your presentation, be completely fluent with your recipe, uh, have some some knowledge about all the ingredients in there. But look, if you don't win it, it's not the end of the day. You'll be more than welcome to come back and do whoever brand competition it is. They would love to have you back. Um, the, uh, it, 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 the more you do, the better you become. The more you pick up, the more friends that you meet that will offer you advice. Competitions are brilliant for that exact reason. All right, Cam, thank you so much for talking to us. Um, Hopefully your advice will go far and you'll see lots of uh, confident bartenders coming back to bartending when we're allowed behind the bar again. (laughs) Oh, thank you. Um, You know what? My my last point was always reach out to to a brand ambassador or a, a, a brand director that's 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 hosting these things um they're there to 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 help you and they give them a call send them an email if you're unsure of anything that's what they're there for so yeah definitely definitely speak to them thank you so much for having me having me on here today it's been really good fun catching up thank you so much for giving us your time i know you guys are busy at the moment but uh, it's good to have you on oh my pleasure any Um, I hope you're keeping safe. I hope everyone at home watching this is keeping safe. Hopefully it'll all blow over soon. Um, If you need any help from me, get in touch, even if it's just a chat. So, yeah, I think that's that's important because I'm going fucking stir crazy being locked up inside. (laughs) So, yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks, Cam. Love you lots. Bye.